Now we will discuss about some early experiments related to photosynthesis. Those experiments were very much simple, but those experiments were pioneer one, okay? And those experiments led to a gradual development in our understanding about photosynthesis. And among them, the most famous is Joseph Priestley's Bell Jar experiment. So let us discuss it. Bell Jar experiment. Bell Jar experiment. Who did it? It was performed by Joseph Priestley. Okay. Joseph Priestley. You have heard the name of the scientist? He is one known scientist because he is also famous for discovering oxygen in 1774. He also discovered oxygen in the year 1774. He discovered oxygen. And Joseph Pistle performed this Bellinger experiment in the year of 1770. Mark this year, this is 1770. In 1770, oxygen was not discovered. What he did actually? He took one bell jar, bell shaped jar. What is the significance of this bell jar? This is one closed space, okay? Totally airtight, no air can come in or nothing inside this, which is entrapped inside this bell jar will not get the chance to go out. Inside this bellier, he kept one burning candle. One burning candle, okay? And another one, a live mouse. Suppose this is the mouse. After some time, he observed that within this bellier, the mouse first started to suffocate, then it died. The mouse now died. Okay? And the warning candle, it is extinguished. It is not burning right now. It is extinguished. So what actually occurred there in this experiment? In this closed space, here, Oxygen was present because it is part of air. So as part of air, all the components of the air will be present inside this bell jar. And this mouse, this is one breathing animal, aerobic animal. This will use this oxygen. And also this burning procedure, you know, this is one oxidative procedure. Oxygen is required for any type of burning of any material. So oxygen was also using by this candle but the amount of oxygen was limited here and there was no supply of oxygen because this was barrier and it is, it is one closed space okay no chance of coming oxygen from outside and there is no source inside this which is generating oxygen so this limited oxygen which is present in, inside this barrier will be used up after some time so it is used up and after some time due to the lack of oxygen this mouse started suffocating and then it died and this candle also extinguished. Then Joseph Priestley did another one thing. With the same type of setup, with the same type of setup, he first put one mint plant, okay? One mint plant. So this is mint plant. He also kept one a live mouse like earlier and the same warning candle also here interestingly after some time he observed that everything was fine inside this bellier this plant was as it is this plant was as it is the mouse was also alive it didn't start to suffocate and the candle is also warming. It is also working. So this was observed by Joseph Priestley. Remember what happened here. Here actually 
this previous phenomenon is occurring similarly oxygen the limited amount of oxygen the limited amount of oxygen which is present inside this belger was using up by this mouse and also by this candle burning candle but here this mint plant is photosynthetic plant this will do photosynthesis you know one of the product of photosynthesis is oxygen so this mint plant will release oxygen into this belger so there is one source of supplying oxygen present that's why the little amount of oxygen which will be present inside this will not be used up completely because this mint plant will continue supplying oxygen and the co2 which is very much essential for photosynthesis to occur in this mint plant will not be also finished up because these mouse as end product of their respiration will evolve co2 and this candle which is generally made up of wax which is one carbon compound after burning will also evolve co2 these co2s will be used up by this plant for photosynthesis and, and in return they will evolve oxygen into this so this cycle will be continued and as a result this will be totally undisturbed system and everything will be fine here so it is our explanation but remember this experiment is being carried out in 1770 then this name co2 o2 were not known to joseph priestley he himself discovered oxygen in 1774 after 4 years of that experiment okay so in his terminology joseph priestley how explained it in this case joseph priestley said that this breathing animal and this burning candle has damaged the air because he was sure that some amount some part or one part of the air is being used by this mouse and candle he was not sure that it is oxygen later on we came to know that it is oxygen but in 1770 it was not known to joseph priestley so he used the term damage the air use the term word damage of air okay he said that this mouse and this burning candle damaged the air and here what he said he said that in this system mint restore whatever this mouse or this burning candle removed from the air and this experiment is very much essential because this experiment this belger experiment this reveals the role of air the role of air in the development of plant now let's see the experiment of jan engine house jan engine house one met joseph priestley and joseph priestley described the results of his experiment which he carried out the belger experiment and from there jan engine house got the inspiration and also interest was generated in his mind about plant physiology let us see what was the experiment which was carried out by jan engine house experimental setup similar type of setup was used by jan engine house which was used by joseph priestley okay but here it this experiment will be carried out with different aspects and different in different aim what was the result of joseph priestley's experiment joseph priestley's experiment revealed the role of air in the development process of plant but here jan engine house experiment will reveal the role of sunlight or role of sunlight in photosynthesis okay let us see what jan engine house g did he took one beaker like this okay then he took one inverted funnel then one tube like this this was the instrument 
which was used by Jan Engine House and this was filled up by water okay this is a water this is all a water this is all a water so there is a layer of water like this till this and Jan Engine House used aquatic plants for his experiment so she took this aquatic plant here suppose this is the aquatic plant okay this is the aquatic plant and these are the green parts of that aquatic plants green parts of that aquatic plants these are the green parts he first placed this set up under sunlight so under sunlight this is placed sunlight is present here what he noticed he noticed that some small bubbles are being formed around this green part of the plant so small bubbles are being formed okay small bubbles are being formed around this green parts of the plant around the green parts only okay small bubbles are being formed so what are being formed small bubbles small bubbles are being formed and later he also showed that these bubbles are actually oxygen bubble and again he placed this set up in one dark place means there is no sunlight is present so dark environment or dark place no sunlight is present and then he found that these bubbles which were formed in the presence of sunlight around the green parts is absent right now and these are not forming around the green parts so he showed that in presence of sunlight the green parts remember only the green parts green parts means the chlorophylls so he also showed us that photosynthesis occurs only in the green parts of the plants and in sunlight in the presence of sunlight only oxygen evolves okay jan engine house also realized and he also showed that in a darkness or in the night in night these plants these aquatic plants or other plants in night plants release co and he also realized that in the presence of sunlight what amount of oxygen this small amount of oxygen evolves under sunlight its amount was far far greater than the co2 produced in night okay he also realized this so this is the experiment of jan engine house